So today I'm going to go get some abalone. Just knocked off work early. Um, and I've got a real short amount of time to go get my bag limit of um, row abalone. That's all I'm getting. I'm not going for green lip or brown lip. I suck at free diving anyway. So I normally just stick with the rowies. Um, they're everywhere around here. Um, I'm not going here. This is just a nice spot to stop and film. I've got somewhere easier because I've only got a short amount of time, can't stuff around. Normally in about, from like surface level down to about two meters deep, sometimes deeper, but normally you want to be looking like right at the top column of water, like the top, top half a meter really probably has the most. They're just jammed in everywhere in there or top one meter. Uh, just where the waves are washing around, so they're a pain in the ass to get on a um, on a rough day. But it's a beautiful, calm day today. I could be going anywhere to get them. Really, I could be going to some real remote spots where you can just walk around and pluck them off the reef without even getting wet. But um, yeah, I don't have time, so I'm going to get 20 of them if I can quickly. I'll show a bit of footage of me getting them. I'm going to take them home. I'm going to keep them alive in a dry bag, which is going to be a wet bag. Um, and then I'll clean them at home and show you the process. But I think it's important to keep them alive until you're ready to kill them. You don't want to just leave them sitting around in the sun or sitting in their own juices for like half a day dead. Just like you wouldn't with a fish. I'm gonna prep the abs now, so they should still be alive in here. It smells very abish. 20 in there. Um, some sort of flannelette or whatever. They weren't overly big, but big enough. So you've got two sides to them. One side has got a, I'll grab a bigger one, that one's dismal. One side's got more of a rounded lip and this one just comes in flat. So you come in from under the flat side and just scrape away where they're attached. You can see that's the attachment point. There's a little bit of meat left there, but most of it, most of the gizzards stay in the shell. And then you just cut, it's a bit of a generous cut, but that bit there is either its mouth, I think it's its mouth, and you just cut that bit off with the gizzards and leave that. So you do that, I'll show another one. Sometimes it comes off different. Get the gizzards off, and then right there on the mouth, just cut around that, and that's it. All right, once you cut them out there, it go all tense. So you, this is just to stop them skidding around and getting splattered juice on you pretty much. And you don't need anything fancy. I used to do it with a standard hammer or a rock, if that's all you have and you're camping anything. Give them a good bash and don't have to mince them but just loosens them up a bit and they Squishy. give them a good massage and that's it. The kids like to help with this. I cut them out 
and they, I cut them out and they bash them. There you go. Go for it. That's probably enough. Perfect. Squishy! So I've just rinsed the abs, gave them all a good rinse because there's nothing worse than having sand and grit in your food. Um, so that's important. You'll notice I don't bother to cut the edges off. Lots of people say, oh, you've got to cut the edges off. You've got to, got to cut them thin and stuff like that. But with row abs, you don't have to. It doesn't matter. You just cut that section there off and that's it. Give them a good bash and then I'm just going to panko them. Give them a good coating, won't take long. Okay, I'll swap burners, that one wasn't working. But we'll get this one going. It's a bit better. Probably about 30 seconds aside until the um until it's just nice and golden brown. Chuck some pepper on. A bit of salt. Going everywhere. That's hot. Come on, cook. Alright. I reckon that's what you want. Golden brown. Done. Nice and quick. Good squeeze of lemon. Pip in there. be hot. So this is how tender they should be. If they're chewy at all, you've done something wrong. Just like that. And then I'm gonna eat some of these and I'm gonna show you another way to cook abalone if you want to make it into a pasta meal with linguine. Whenever I'm camping that's like my go-to. It's like a good entree or goes really good in wraps and stuff. This is the abalone linguine meal that I make. Hot enough. So melt down nice big chunk of butter. Chuck in. A generous amount of um, garlic, minced garlic, because I can't be bothered chopping up that much garlic. And I'll let that cook for a bit. I believe that is boiling, so I can probably start that now. Boiling water, chuck some salt in. Chuck some linguine in. And while that is cooking away, I'm just gonna dice all the abalone up into strips, probably about thirds or quarters. So now the garlic is cooked a reasonable amount. I will get a whole big stack of cherry tomatoes, halved or quartered, throw them in there. I'm going to get a big chunk of pepper on top of that and just stir that through. 
and also some capers. One, two, three, four, I reckon. And I just cook that until it's all sort of, all the tomatoes are softened up and that's basically your sauce. Alright, so that's simmered down a bit. Water's coming out. The linguine is done. I will put a bit of olive oil in there and toss it around a bit. And then throw it in there, turn that off, mix that around, and I cook the abalone separate, obviously, in another frying pan. So I'll do that now. And then and then I'll show you what's next. Alright, so I'm just cooking the abalone in batches. This is the last batch. So, good amount of butter. And get it nice and hot. It'll get a bit brown, a bit nutty, but that's fine. We'll wait for it to heat up enough and then we'll throw the last batch in. So that's hot enough now I reckon. Tuck the last load of abs in. Cook them for probably a minute, maybe a bit less even. And that's it. Throw them in there. Throw the whole lot in there. Big handful of parsley. That's um, oriental or flat leaf parsley. And toss it all around. And that's it, done. So it's dinner time now. I'm gonna leave it at that. We're gonna dish up and eat. Um, thanks for watching. I will hopefully be getting out on the rocks and doing something a little bit more extreme than cooking in the kitchen very soon. Um, got some very nice weather happening down here at the moment. So thanks for watching, see ya.